Hi guys. All right, so now I'm going to read you the next two chapters in Crash. So just to recap a little bit, um, I think we got as far as two main characters, Crash Kogan and Penn Webb. Crash is kind of the more stinker kid, uh, kind of teases Penn, doesn't really know how to take Penn because Penn wears buttons and he just came from... Um, North Dakota and he just moved into Pennsylvania and Crash is just kind of giving him a hard time. Took his turtle and won't tell him his name and he's just, you know, you gotta, you gotta keep in mind these kids are five, six years old. So it's just the summer before first grade. So, um, you know, it's not right the way he's treating him, uh, but he's still little so he doesn't really know any better. So he's, it's kind of funny how he's just a little stinker. So um, we're going to continue with the story. The last time we left off was when he was kind of trying to stay away from his mom. He was trying to find out if he had a great-great-grandfather or at least a great-grandfather. And his mom was mad because he had buried her pansies, um, which are just like little purple flowers. So chapter three. Next time I heard him, he was calling, hey, John, hey, John. He was running up the street. I was busy peeling bark off the tree in the yard. I glared at him. Who says my name's John? He came up to me, huffing, button in and out. Your sister, she said your nickname is Crash, but your real name is John Patrick Kogan. I didn't know whether to be mad at him or her. What were you doing talking to her? Yesterday I was looking for you. I saw her out front here. She didn't know where you were. I was out on business, I said. He never seemed to turn off the goofy grin. It was really starting to bug me more than the button. You want to know my name, I told him. You check with me. Okay, he said, still grinning. Can I call you Crash? Any other time, to any other person, I would have said yes. But even that seemed like I was giving him just too much. So I said, no. He blinked. No, that's what I said. He shrugged. So what can I call you? Call me horse meat. He blinked some more. I was almost starting to enjoy this kid. Like I was the cat. He was the mouse. He started to say something. I poked him in the chest. You call me that and I'll, and I'll cut your hair off. I held up a kitchen knife that I was peeling the tree with. I had him so bamboozled, he didn't know which way was up. I was practically choking, trying not to laugh. So I said, why were you looking for me? He, his old beaming face came back. I wanted to ask you if you would like to come to dinner at my house. The only word I could think of was, why? Because you're my first friend in Pennsylvania. We do that all the time in North Dakota, have friends over for dinner. Don't you want to do that? Don't you do that here? We do what we want here, I said. I was stalling for time. The last thing I needed was to have dinner with this family of ham bones. And I didn't like him calling me friend. On the other hand, I was kind of curious to get an inside look at the, at the boss dorks and the garage that they thought was a house. But if I did go, I would, have, I, he would, I would have to make him pay for it. Maybe I'll come, I said, but only if you can beat me to the draw. Draw, he said. Yeah, water pistols. Wait here. I ran to my room. I got two water guns, loaded them at the bathroom sink, and brought them out. I gave him one. Here's yours. Stick it in your pocket like this. We stand five steps apart. At the count of three, draw and fire. Got it? He didn't say anything for a long time. The grin was gone. He just stared at the green plastic gun in his hand. He wasn't even holding it right. He was biting his lip. Finally, he looked up at me. I can't. I gawked at him. You can't? He shook his head. Why not? He looked up, at, he looked me dead in the eye and said, I'm a Quaker. Okay, so where have we heard that word before, a Quaker? It's about 13 colonies, social studies, and the Quaker was a religion, um, and they're very peaceful people. Uh, they lived in Pennsylvania. William Penn was a Quaker, and Pennsylvania was named after him. So, um, Penn is a a Quaker. So, chapter four. A Quaker? I screeched. What's a Quaker? The only Quaker I ever heard of was the Quaker Oats guy on the cereal. If somebody who is somebody who doesn't believe in violence, he said. I told him, who says you have to believe in it? You just do it. I don't fight in wars. I laughed. I waved my pistol in his face. You ham bone, this ain't war. This is water guns. He held his out to me. I don't play with guns. I didn't take it. Instead, I took a step back, aimed, pulled the trigger, and shot him right between the eyes. Bullseye! 
He didn't move. The gun hung limp in his hand. Water trickled down his nose and around his mouth. Don't you have water guns in North Dakota? I asked him. Some people do, he said, but not me. Well, you're in Pennsylvania now, chief. I aimed again and fired. He still didn't move. This was crazy. Whoever heard of a kid who didn't shoot back? Then all of a sudden, I got it. Ha! I sneered. Now I know what you're doing. You're trying to trick me. I backed up a couple steps, went into a crouch, swung my gun arm up, straight out stiff, left hand clamping right wrist like I saw on TV. Well, it ain't gonna work. Hasta la vista, ham bone. Bam, 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 bam. I fired quick ones. He didn't move except to blink when the water hit his eyes. I couldn't believe anybody could be so dumb. Bam, 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 bam. I stepped to the side to get a better angle on the button. Bam, bam, bam. Tracer jets of water smacked the button while he stood there drenched and monkey-faced and droopy. I was laughing so hard I thought I'd bust a gut. He held out his gun, his loaded weapon, held it out to me. I stopped laughing. I stared at him, at his gun. I swiped it from his hand. That ain't the way it goes, I yelled in his dripping face. You're supposed to shoot back. You're supposed to. I turned the gun on my own face and pulled the trigger. See? I fired, it, fired again. Is that too hard for you? I wound up and whipped his gun over the roof of our house and into the backyard. I slammed my own gun to the ground. I stomped on it, stomped and stomped on it to the green plastic splinters. I stormed out to the garage, over to the flower garden, out to the street, and back to him. I took a deep breath. I got in his face. I stared. I dared him to blink first. I wanted to hate him. I wanted to stay mad, but I was having problems. Okay, I said. I backed off. Okay, I'll give you one more chance to get to earn your way to earn my way to get come to dinner. If you beat me wrestling, are Quakers allowed to wrestle? He sniffed. He licked his lips. He pinched a drop of water from the end of his nose. He smiled. Sure. We went to the grass. We wrestled. I pinned him in about two seconds. Okay, I said. One last chance. Hit the telephone pole. Ten stones. I hit the pole six with six stones. He never even came close. We long jumped. We stood on our heads. We spit for distance. He was hopeless. I shook my head. Ain't you good at anything? He didn't think long. I'm a good runner. I grinned to myself. Okay, I said. One really, really last chance. A race. I pointed up to the mailbox and back to... I ran my sneaker toe along the edge of the driveway. Here. We crouched, toe on the crack. I called, ready, set, go. I was six years old and had never lost a race in my life. That's why I was so surprised when I reached out to push off to the cool blue metal of the mailbox to see his hand there too. On the way back, I kicked in the afterburners and zipped across the finish line. His footsteps were loud behind me. We stood there bent over catching his breaths. I heard him say, darn. He stamped his foot. It's the first time I ever really saw him get mad. Don't take it so hard, I told him. Nobody beats me. That's not it, he said. He had on that gloom monkey face again. So what is it then? He sniffed. Now you're not coming. He headed off down the street. I let him go about five or six houses away before I called. Yo, Webb. He turned, sagging. I changed my mind. I'll come. It took a minute to sink in. Then he jumped like a jack in the box. He yelled, woohoo, and ran on home. That night, even after I closed my eyes, I kept seeing our hands hit the mailbox together. So even though Crash won, it bothered him that Penn came so close to beating him because he's so used to being the best at everything. All right, so we're going to stop right there, and I hope you have a great day. See ya.